Hello, everyone. Um, we're here in New York on lockdown because of the coronavirus uh, scare. All the courts are closed. We have a stay at home, shelter in place orders. So it's a little bit of a tough time. Everyone's very scared and everyone's very cautious. And um, I wanted to, you know, take the time, what I've been doing and what the rest of my staff at uh, Freckman and Associates have been doing during this time is they've been reviewing cases, uh, doing uh, case plans for each of our litigation files. And they've also been uh, attending webinars, reading books, uh, watching videos, and trying to improve their uh, growth, their personal growth and their uh, career and educational growth as lawyers. And I was reflecting back on the last few years, and for example, in 2019, just last year, I did about seven jury trials. And I was thinking about like, what are, were the things that really helped me? And I thought one of the tactics that I learned about was uh, written in a book by um, somebody named William Barton. It's called Recovering for Psychological Injuries is, is the name of the book. And um, it's very interesting because one of the things that he talks about is when you're picking a jury for trial and you're in the voir dire process as an attorney, what you want to do is you want to think about your case and you want to maybe write down two or three or more of your greatest fears or your biggest worries. And what you want to do is you want to ask the jury to co-author a fears or worry list with you in the voir dire. So when you get up there, you could actually tell the jury a little bit about the case. Like this is an auto uh, crash case. My client uh, was driving his car, another car, it's alleged another car changed lanes and sideswiped him. Um, you, know, you, you could hear more during the trial. And then, you know, what should I be afraid of if you've heard a case like that? What, what do you think my uh, fear should be? What do you think my worries should be? And then you let the jury tell you. And it's a very powerful tactic. In fact, what he tells you in the book is you should actually get a big piece of butcher paper and you could write down fears list or worries list uh, on top of the paper. And on the left side, you could put plaintiff and you could put one, two, three, four, and you actually write out all of the worries that somebody who's representing the plaintiff should have. And on the right side, you could put defendant and you could have the jury tell you what they think the defendant should be worried about, or maybe just some general worries that both sides might have, right? Maybe the, 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 some of the jurors are thinking, you know, I just don't want to be here because I have, uh, you know, I have uh, exams or I can't get off of work or whatever the, the reason might be. But it, it's important um, and it's really a, a different way of doing things because a lot of lawyers, what they'll do is if they have, let's say, a car crash case, they'll just come in and they'll say, well, can you be fair to somebody who was involved in a, in a car crash? Can you be fair to somebody who was injured? Can you allow for uh, a fair amount of compensation? And then most people will just say yes, yes, yes. And then, but how do you know what that means, right? You as the lawyer might think fair is a million dollars and the juror you just uh, agree to allow uh, to decide your trial might be thinking, yeah, fair is about like 10 grand. So it's a big difference, right? So this is a good approach. And, um, you know, I've, I've tried this a few times and I thought it, 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 every time it went pretty well because you're just kind of talking to the jurors and you're telling them like, what should I be afraid of? Tell me honestly. And then these people are just, you know, regular everyday people from the community. They're being plucked from their lives. Some of them, you know, might stay at home and take care of kids. Others go to work every day. Um, some of them might be students. They're being plucked from their lives and brought into this courthouse and they can't really say no. And they're being told to be jurors on these cases. And so you really want to hear what they think the problems might be for your case, because in the end, they are the ones that are going to make the decision because you're going to have the law instructions from the judge. You're going to hear the evidence or the facts from witnesses or from documents that come out during the trial. Uh, attorneys are going to be able to make opening statements and closing arguments, but the verdict is going to be rendered by that jury. They're going to go into a room. They're going to talk to each other. They might feel, you know, different ways. In New York, we have six jurors. Three of them might 
be for you and three of them might be against you. So now they have to convince each other why, you know, their rendition of what the verdict should be is correct, right? So maybe three of them have to convince the other three. So you, you have to look at the group dynamics. You have to look at who might be a leader. So it's very good to have them tell you what the problems will be. And one of the things um, that Mr. Barton says is that writing a problem down um, dilutes its potency, right? It makes it less powerful. So if you have a case and you're really worried about something that could really be a problem for you, the fact that you're brave enough to present it and to be vulnerable and authentic and say, look, this is the real problem and put it out there, it kind of externalizes it. And now the jurors are you know, looking at the problem and discussing it outside of themselves. And you're writing it down on a piece of paper and we're all discussing it. And it, it's very good, it, it, it really works. So he was actually, in the book, he actually talks about some common problems that he sees. And he was saying some of the common problems in personal injury cases might be things like, uh, some jurors might say, there are too many lawsuits. Someone else might say, well, I see all these lawsuits for millions of dollars. Someone else might say, well, the defendant was a fine citizen and a good person, and the defendant never intended this. The defendant never intended to hit someone else with their, with their car. So why should the defendant be made to, to pay? Whereas, you know, in reality, we all know it's not really the, you know, Betty Smith, the poor old lady who's going to be paying the money. It's going to be the big billion dollar insurance conglomerate that's going to be paying the money and they're just using Betty Smith as a pawn to try to uh, weasel their way out of it and pay less money. So, But these are all things that are, are very interesting and it's important that the worry list include all of your worst fears because the fact that it's complete and it's honest is exactly what makes it work. And um, the other thing that is very important is that you co-author this list with the jurors. So you have the jurors tell you what they think, you write it all down, you kind of exhaust that. Then once you have the list, you can maybe say, well, what do you think about X? Or what do you think about Y? And you get them talking to each other and to you. And so, so yeah, I've tried this a few times and I thought it was really a good, um, a good, uh, a good way to do it because you're, you're not fighting your fear. What you're really doing is you're embracing your fear and you're, you're letting it all out there and your vulnerability and your humanity is shown. And that's what really uh, is, is persuasive and powerful. And in the end, if you pick the right jury, a lot of lawyers will tell you picking the right jury is like 90% of the trial. Uh, and then you're, you're, you're halfway home. You, you already have yourself set up for, for, for a win for yourself and, and most importantly for your client. So I hope this has been helpful and uh, be happy to share some more tips and resources as we continue to study during this uh, great pause that we have. Have a great day, everyone.